Exploration and innovation drives our human progress and whether it's out here in the wild or at home in the fusion lab, I want to be part of that. My name is Melanie Windridge, I'm a physicist but I love the outdoors so I try and combine physics with the mountains or the Arctic or any kind of outdoor adventure at every opportunity. I love to see science in the outdoors, both in the natural wonders like geology, glaciology, but also in how science can drive us forward. Last October, I went to Nepal to climb a mountain called Putha High in Chuli. It's a 7,200 meter peak. It's snowing outside. It's still quite heavy. It's been snowing since last night. We're staying up here because there's quite an avalanche risk on the slope, so we just have to wait until the weather improves. I'm outside, it's been snowing a lot. We've been digging out the tents. Um, yeah, there's a lot of snow lying around, you can see it. Two Sherpas descending to Kakot talk to the yak herders and implore them to come up and help us get to base camp. Otherwise we're stuck. But we never made it because we got snowed in. There was a big cyclone that came across India. We were on our way to base camp and so much snow fell that we just got stuck. So we were stuck there for about two weeks. We could neither get further up to base camp nor could we get back down. This is what it looks like in my tent at Panji camp while the sun's still up. It'll be gone soon and then it'll be freezing. That was an incredible experience, just to, to be there in this wonderful, beautiful environment. And I actually went there because I wanted to do some mountain science experiments. So we're at 5,200 meters and the water is boiling at 83 and a half degrees. On the mountain, in the snow, and especially when the sun's going down as it is now, it can get very cold. And so hypothermia or frostbite are real issues. So we need to keep warm. And of course, we use different types of clothing to do this. Insulation becomes very important. Now we know that some clothes are warmer than others. In other words, they're more insulating than others. What makes things more insulating? During that cyclone, the snow uh, swept right across uh, the Himalayas, particularly in the Annapurna regions, and there were a lot of avalanches that were caused and a lot of people died. We, thankfully, were all right, and I really think that science had a big part to play in that because, firstly, we had a weather warning. We had communications, so we were able to get a good weather report from England saying that there's a cyclone on the way and we need to prepare for that. Secondly, we had good equipment. So we had good tents, we had good clothing, we had an understanding of avalanches and, and how they progress. We were supposed to be camped down there where there are some flatter areas. We arrived here two nights ago and the weather forecast was for a lot of snow. We've had about 50 to 60 centimetres yesterday. So we took the decision to camp up on the ridge because this slope, because of its gradient, is quite avalanche prone. We didn't want to be stuck there at the bottom where we could get caught in a slide. All of this, this science and this knowledge, I think really helped to, to keep us safe. So we were very lucky where others weren't. Bye bye Panji Camp. <laughs> My background is in plasma physics. I have a doctorate in plasma physics and plasmas are actually all around us. So a lot of the coolest things on earth or actually in the universe are plasmas. Um, on earth, northern lights, I love the northern lights. Also fusion energy, lightning, all these things are plasmas. So I've been doing a lot of work in the Arctic this year, writing a book on the northern lights. So that has been a wonderful experience. The aurora has a reputation for being elusive, which adds to its mystery and attraction. It's a natural process, completely out of our control. To see it, you must be in the right place at the right time. The conditions must be favourable too. The sky should be dark and clear. Clouds mask the view and even moonlight can wash out the delicate colours of the aurora. To see it in full splendour is a gift. My book, Aurora, investigates the science behind the Northern Lights, but also explores the people, the landscapes, the stories, which are also much part of the wonder of the aurora. As a physicist, my fascination with the Northern Lights grew gradually to a point where I didn't just want to see it, I wanted to know it. 
I knew the basic science behind the aurora. It is an event caused by charged particles that are channeled down magnetic field lines and interact with our atmosphere. I am fascinated by exploration, particularly polar exploration. I love the stories of people pushing themselves to their limits to increase mankind's knowledge of the world, testing themselves in harsh environments and ultimate survival situations. These delicate lights stirred even those tough men, who often wrote rapturous accounts in their diaries. I wanted to learn more about their motivations and ambitions, both personal and scientific, to different degrees, and I wanted to gain a better understanding of what they endured in pursuit of those ambitions. In February I went to Svalbard, and I went up there because I wanted to see the aurora in a wilderness environment. I'd seen it before from just outside towns and I wanted to see it like how the old polar explorers may have experienced it. It was freezing, I've never <laughs> experienced anything like it. Temperatures went down to about minus 35 degrees and it, those kind of temperatures you really have to just focus everything is such an effort so your whole focus is on just what needs to be done next so whether that's heating up water for food or changing your socks or like anything you do requires a huge amount of, of willpower. So it was a fascinating experience. We did get to see the Northern Lights, which was lovely, but I realized that it's not the best place to see the Northern Lights because you really don't want to get outside your tent. <laughs> it's just far too cold, but it was a wonderful, incredible experience. The Norwegian polar explorer Nansen was a scientist before he was an explorer and consequently all his expeditions had strong scientific objectives. As well as testing the theory of the east-west current and filling in blank areas on the map, the team made measurements on oceanography, meteorology, marine geology, geomagnetism, flora and fauna, and of course the aurora. And many of these measurements now constitute important contributions to their fields. Exploration is important because it drives us further. I think that there's a a cycle between science and exploration. Something makes us seek out the unknown. We want to explore, we want to see what's out there. But in order to do that, we need to have some kind of technology, some kind of science to push us further. The human desire to seek out the unknown is pivotal to human progress. 